okay? I just think it's for peasants. All I'm saying is that paid apps are just better. No, no I don't. I don't, I don't care if you found a free open source screenshot app that blurs the text without affecting the background. Wait, what is this app called? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Come for the productivity tips and stay for the future star of Hollywood. Today, we have six underrated Mac apps for productivity. So let's just get started. Productive app number one, Shotter. This screenshot app has all the normal stuff. You can add number counters, add text, uh, use a rectangle to highlight something, add arrows. But there are five features that really blew my mind. First, you can blur or erase only the text in a selected area. For high maintenance perfectionists like myself, this is super important because other screenshot apps will also blur the background leading to fuzzy edges. Second, you can hover over any color within the screenshot and press tab to immediately copy the hex code to your clipboard. For those of you who watch my file management Mac app video, you know I used to use another app called Color Picker to do this. Third, the navigation options. Other than scrolling to zoom in and out, you can hold down the right mouse button to pan around like this. And if you want to dive into a specific part, you can select it and press command two to really zoom in. Number four is mainly for designers, but within the screenshot, you can hold down one to measure pixel height and two to measure the pixel width. And clicking while holding will save the measurement within the screenshot for you to send to someone else. Fifth is a built-in OCR functions. If you press command option control O, and select some text like this, it will copy that text directly to your clipboard. This is super useful since I work with a lot of PDFs on Google Drive and I need to copy paste a lot of the text. This also works for QR codes and once someone's presenting, I actually don't like to scan this using my phone. So I just press command option control O, select the QR code, the link is immediately copied to my clipboard and I can just paste it into the browser. Pro tip, under preferences advanced, you should pick a primary OCR language other than Latin languages, because for example, if I pick Chinese and I use this feature, this recognizes my Chinese name and my English name, no problem. But if I go back here and choose Latin languages, do the same thing over again, now it fails to recognize the Chinese characters, but the English is fine. Under the general settings, I choose show and copy after taking a screenshot. So I have the option to paste without editing, but I always choose to show editor since I know I have to edit like 90% of the time. Full disclaimer, I still find myself using CleanShot X a lot more since I need to upload my screenshots to the cloud for easy sharing. And it's slightly more responsive than Shotter. CleanShot is a paid app, but I'll still link it down below if you wanna check it out. Free productivity Mac app number two, Mac mouse fix. So check this out. If I hold down the middle button of my mouse, I'm able to take a screenshot immediately. If I double click, I move right a space. If I triple click, I come back. This is possible because within the app, I have it set up so that if I hold down the middle button, it runs a keyboard shortcut, uh, shift command nine, which is what I have for taking a screenshot. If I change a keyboard shortcut to command option control O, now if I hold down the uh, middle button, it runs text and QR recognition instead. Same logic applies for double click and triple click. And while you can assign the default middle click to like another action, I keep it as the normal middle click because I'm just so used to opening and closing tabs with it. I should mention for those of us using an MX Master mouse, the native Logi Options Plus app does a much better job at assigning actions to the different buttons. For example, uh, for the thumb button here, if I just hold this down and move to the right, it moves right a space and I move left, it comes back. For those of us not spending a hundred bucks on a mouse though, Mac Mouse Fix greatly improves the functionality of a more affordable mouse. Underrated MacBook app number three, Tempbox. So we've all probably come across a situation where you need to input your email to download a free guide or to sign up for an app. The problem is sometimes they'll start sending you newsletters as well. No problem, if you use Tempbox, you can generate a real email address and use it to sign up for whatever you want and not have to worry about potentially receiving spam in your personal inbox. Pro tip, this might also work for those semi-scammy LinkedIn posts where they ask for your email in the comments. I'm legit curious whether any of you have actually received what they promised you after leaving your email, because I think I tried this once in college to get a spreadsheet 
but I ended up on a random mailing list. Anyways, back to 10 bucks. You can create a multiple addresses and even change the prefix to anything you want. And you actually don't lose access to any of the mailboxes, even though it's called 10 bucks, unless you choose to delete it yourself. Pro tip, you can create a newsletter specific inbox and have all the newsletters land in a single location, then upgrade the ones worth your time to your personal email inbox. One bug I have run into though, is that whenever you receive a link to something, you have to right click on the link and copy link and open it up in another browser because opening the link doesn't really work within Tempbox itself. Productivity app number four is a quickie and it's called Latest. So all three apps I've mentioned so far, Shotter, MacMouse Fix, and Tempbox, you do not download them through the app store. And the problem with this is that you're notified of updates at random times. And this gets super annoying if you use a lot of these apps. So what I like to do is to disable the automatic check for updates feature after downloading individual apps. And once a week, use the latest app to check for updates for all the apps. I can now choose to update this individually, ignore it, or click the download all button here to download all available updates. MacBook app number five, Hoverly. I feel bad about this one because it basically replaced another app I mentioned before called There. So There lets you see the current time in different locations around the world relative to where you are right now pretty helpful, right? Hoverly takes this a step further by not only showing you what the current time is, but also letting you scrub through the time of day to let you see what the time would be at the other location. Super useful when planning meetings with people around the world. You can select as many time zones as you want to keep them active in the menu bar, but I usually just have one or none to keep it clean. All right, so I have to admit, I cheated for the last app because it's the built-in stickies app for the Mac. But in my defense, I was using a third-party application called Transparent Note. Up until I realized you could toggle the transparency of the default sticky by pressing Command Option T and keep it pinned up top by pressing Command Option F, like so. Two specific situations where I use this. First, when I'm presenting in a meeting, I like to have this pinned and transparent so I can just refer to my notes as I go through the slides. Pro tip, if you use the default presentation mode for Google Slides, it gets, rid of the, it gets rid of the pinned note. But if you enter presenter view, this will still be kept up top and you can just like close the window here and go through the slide. Second situation where you might find this helpful is if you're in a virtual interview, you can keep the note as close to the webcam as possible. So you have like a cheat sheet in front of you. I also love how you can quickly change the font size by pressing command plus or minus. Uh, command M to collapse or expand. And under window, arrange by color, this brings them all into a neat little pile. If you found these six Mac apps helpful, you might enjoy this video on MacBook tips that seem just a little too good to be true. See you on the next video in the meantime. Have a great one.